Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 15, part 2. Toy Scalping, the Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Joining me as always, my co host, Junior. And our guest, the Quiet Man, Johnny Freeze. And this is Carry the Camera Guy, or CC for short. And on the phone, we have Dennis. Welcome back, Dennis. What's up? Dennis Barter from Wonder World Comics. Just glad to be a part of it, guys. Excellent. Glad to have you, sir. So, as we left off last time, you were talking about uh, the, the, the Maddie, 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 Maddie. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's where I really think the future of toy scalping is these, these collectible sites. And once they get this down, it's really going to put an end to scalping. Um, there's this thing called the direct market, and that's what the comic book stores are all a part of. Right. DC Comics, for the last, uh, I think it's 15, 20 years, have had this DC direct line. Which they produce as many as comic shops want to order. Uh, they're available all across the nation. Usually a comic book shop can be found through the comic shop locator, comic shop locator.com. You know, you go to our site, wonderworldcomics.com, and you can find all this, you know, information on what's coming out every week. So you can be there the day the, the toys are available. This is a model that I think a lot of people can take advantage of. Now, DC has actually gone one step further. They can kind of cut the nuts out of all the comic book shops by having their own online stores that sell just a five dollars cheaper than what we sell it for. Yep. But but they're actually creating that you can get this. Don't you don't have to pay a higher fee, guys. You can get this somewhere, somehow, some way. Yeah. And that I think is the future. With Maddie Collector and Fun Publications, you know, with these G.I. Joe Collectors Clubs and all of these different you know short way to get it. And almost every San Diego Comic Con exclusive is going to be available on Hasbro.com, you know, uh, Maddie and Mattel.com. You know, all these companies have their own website that whenever they find out that they have X amount left, they put them all available for the same price they sold it to me. I got to fly $700 to fly to San Diego, pay $400 a night for a hotel, wait in a line with some, you know, Comic Con people. You're being kind, Dennis, when you're saying that. I can hear the disdain in your voice. And, <laughs> and let me tell you, you I, I will give you props. You are you are far more data, dedicated than me because I will not set foot in San Diego, man. Yeah, well, you know, when you get in the business, you have to do business, and that's where you do business in the comic book industry. Yep, totally agree. But, but one, of those, you know, one of those things is it's become exclusive gun. You know, I mean, you go to the thing, there's 200 pages of exclusives. Yeah, I've seen that. You know, it's a pain in the ass. And that's created these exclusive hunting clubs. I went there last year, and there was this group of like 40 people in matching t-shirts. And they were going, and five of them would get in the Hasbro line, five of them would get in the Mattel line, five of them would get in the Nickel line, five of them, and they were scattered all through there. I couldn't swear to put out in one of these red shirts. And there was like this one really kind of heavy set one that was sitting up at the outside of the convention center. With all of the bags from Hasbro and Nick Mattel, and they had all the little big plastic bags that you got for going to these booths. So, so what? I'm like, oh, go ahead. And I'm like, oh my god, you're, it's like a sea of these bags, and you guys have bought all of these. And then when they had spent all their money or gotten all the exclusives they wanted for the day, and then, you know, the rare ones were sold out, and they get in line and go back in line and go back in line. And they were just. Again, though, I mean, so I mean, do I mean, do you think San Diego? I mean, it keeps. Is there a way to stop the the feeding into this? Because, like I said, I, it's become this this monstrosity. Uh, you know, you, how you're upset about that? I can hear in your voice about with these assholes in San Diego. I mean, where where is the line drawn, or where is the way to to maybe fix this, or once again get it to where you know what? I understand. I mean, and, and we, we've talked about it before. Listen. Reasonable prices is fine. You know, listen, I understand, you know, I can't get out or, or for the mom and pa. You know, if it's, if it's a $10 figure and you pay $20, most people, that's cool. But for example, those assholes at San Diego, when you're getting, you know, charging $50 to $100, 
you're, you're getting these unrealistic, crazy prices, and you're just mobbing everything. I mean, how do you how do you fix this, Dennis? How do you clean it up? Well, it, it's, it's, it's patience, guys. <laughs> it, it's really, it's patience. You know, the, the, let's look at the, who's the real scalper here. Is the real scalper the guy who fled at San Diego with 39 of his friends and sends five to each line or 10 to each line and has one person guarding all the bags? Yeah, no, to buy a $50 explosive that costs the company $2. Oh, we've never right? denied that, man, but that's... <laughs> that's the grade-A douchebaggery. Yeah. Said. You know, I can't blame... Yeah, they, that, yeah, I agree. They're douchebags. But, I mean, it's not illegal to do it, you know, and... Unethical, maybe. It, yeah, <laughs> unethical, not illegal. I'm not saying... I mean, but then, you know... They, this is something that goes I with anything, though. No. Yeah. yeah. I meant to that. Do you, as a scalper, do you feel like an asshole that sometimes you might be taking away something that a kid might have wanted. And, like, for instance, I was at Walmart a few weeks ago, and I collected the new Turtles line, and they had a bunch of stuff I didn't have, and four of the figures I couldn't afford to buy at the time, so I hid them. And then two minutes later, I saw a, a set of grandparents looking at Ninja Turtle toys for their grandson, and I knew that I had put stuff away that this kid probably didn't have, and they're like, oh, they don't have, and it kind of felt like a dick. You are. You are. It's and, well, so it's it's you are dick. Dumb. They're driving around with no knowledge whatsoever, and you just plucked a toy that would have made their grandchild life that it was better. You scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> so there's your answer, bro. I shattered that. I did. 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 I there you go. And they would have saved, the damage away, folks. Take notes. Nice. I, I, I will definitely take note of that. Well, but, 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 just no, honestly, my, in my conscience, I felt like an asshole. Well, Brian, just... And then I asked my fiance, should I go back there and pull those out and ask them if they want? And she was just like, eh. Would they do it for you? Yeah, yeah true. See, I... In I this was, role, I, as much as I hate to say it, you got to put yourself first. See, I guess I'm just the, the You exception. and your family come first. I'm the exception. I openly admit it. I'll, Congratulations, you know, guys. You're all ready to become scalpers. No, <laughs> Dennis, <laughs> Dennis, I'm going to burst your bubble right there. Okay? I ran across, when I was out in the D, actually, when I saw you, uh, I went wandering to Toys R Us, and they had three Darth, Darth, Darth Malguses. I bought one for my buddy at price, one for me at price, and I left one on the rack for some child, hopefully, to discover Darth Malgus or whatever. And when you walked out of the store, some Dennis walked in. Some asshole like so, you yeah. came and said, oh, I'm not hiding so, this. There, there, there's still some hope left, Dennis. No, there's, there's definitely some. I got a friend that collects the Marvel Universe figure line. And he found a Norman Osborn no mask green goblin. Uh, I guess it's a variant. Iron Patriot. Okay. And this kid came in with his dad. Oh, I'm trying to find Iron Patriot, Iron Patriot. And this guy was like, you know what? I'm going to give this to this kid. Because I've already found something else I wanted also. And obviously it would make this kid's day. And I was like, man, kudos to you. Because I wouldn't have done that shit. <laughs> Kids got to learn all the way. Fuck you, kid. <laughs> well, wait, hold on a second. You got to go wherever when you were a kid. And there was that one thing that you didn't get. It. No, oh, of course. I, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. I... I Guess I didn't think Brian, big. Brian and I were just discussing this a few episodes ago. Um, issues, man. Issues. Excuse me. Issues ago. Uh, where? Uh, <laughs> good job, John. We were taught we were doing a like a childhood uh, toy ep- issue where we sat back and just reminisced about stuff like that. And we, uh, I asked, I says, Brian, what's the one toy you wanted as a kid that you just could not find? You know, what was it? You answered the uh, U.S. flag, right? No, I couldn't get the flag because my parents couldn't afford it, but it was the Castle Grayskull that we couldn't okay. find. Okay, okay. See, with me, when I was a kid, it was the Technodrome from the Ninja Turtles line. That was the one my parents said they searched high and low, and they just could not find it. And my, and my Dennis, like I said, I guess I must have, uh, you know, thought simple, and I was happy with the basic toys, but... Uh, no, it, was, it was, it was, you know, it was the Migo, yeah, it was the Star Wars. I don't remember not being able to find them. And once again, I think that was just because of the they mass produced them. It was never an issue, and you know, like yeah, well, it was actually, it was an issue for you know the cost issue is the big, the big issue. And, and I'll tell you this, and I've talked to a lot of parents and a lot of people who are selling their collections, and you know, and they come in with their parents. And one of the things that I found is a very common determinant denominator is the parents sometimes lie to their kids. You know, I'm not saying that your parents were liars, but I could find you a Castle Grayskull anywhere you wanted back in the early 80s. There was Castle Grayskull and Alpha Wazoo. The parents may not have been able to afford it then. And so therefore that left a hole in you and your collectability, but then that is what 
made you become a modern day point collector. It scarred you for life, bro. <laughs> you know, we lived in a <laughs> shitty southern town in Illinois, and I just chalk it up for the we probably didn't have it. Yeah, no, I, I, once again, I, Junior's seen some of my stuff. I mean, I collect for me. It's stuff's out of the packages. It's just stuff that I enjoy, so. Yeah, see, well, I, I, I live in a small town in the south here where you guys are now. I was in Malikwa, Illinois for the first three years that Star Wars came out. There was nothing in Malikwa, Illinois. Okay, Shelbyville had a okay. Ben Franklin, if you guys remember those back in the day. Totally, I totally remember. And a little bicycle place. shop. Yep. Where the, the, the Star Wars figures were $4 a piece at the bicycle shop. That was double what you could get at the Kmart. And then you had the big town up the road, which, you know, at 15 miles up the road was, you know, for a child, that might as well have been on the other side of the state. And the closest toy to us back then was Peoria or Springfield, I think. Wow. You know, so there wasn't a huge amount of options. Now, Ben Franklin had the USS flag for 150. I wanted the USS flag. AC Days catalog had it for 125. Oh, if you found enough Toys R Us, I think there were 100 or 100 and 10 uh, Toys R Us. It's going to make but, you go home and be like, fuck you, Dad. Do you, do you consider Ben Franklin to be a scalper? Or is that. Still there, Dash? You cut out, boss. Uh, or where did I cut out at? Well, you cut out something about the Ben Franklin, and that was. He asked if Ben, oh, Scal- ben Franklin was the scalper. Or is Ben Franklin the only place in Illinois to find the USS? Hello? Still there, boss? Get up, get up, ready Yeah, I believe what he said was was Ben Franklin the only place in that particular <laughs> town in Illinois where you could get it? Hello? The flag that is. Hello? Yeah, Hello. sorry, man, you're cutting out. Okay, yeah, I'm on a cell phone, sorry. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You called me for okay. the cell <laughs> So, you know, is, is Ben Franklin a scalper, or is Ben Franklin the only convenient place you can buy it in Shelbyville, Illinois? But, but, but once again, it goes back to cost. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's you know, once again, you're talking $2. I, I mean, obviously, for a kid that... That's you know, exp- but in the scheme of things, you're talking a two dollar cost as opposed to a fifty dollar cost. Right. You know, it's I- all economy of scale. And if you absolutely have no patience and you have to have the sticker, you'll pay for it. Right. You know, uh, Darth, uh, which which Darth was it that was up to a hundred dollars oh. from the Star Wars line? No clue. Uh, Darth, Darth something. You know, you know which one? It's from the Legend uh, Legacy comic. Yeah. Um, Darth Malgus? The Darth Malgus one? The one that I went into Toys R Us and bought? <laughs> no, 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 no. This was like a couple years ago, two years ago. Re- Reven or something like that. They re released it in three packs and they released it on a new car, they packed mm-hmm. the same, and all this stuff. Patience, if you have to have that figure, yeah, you might not have it. I have a Tap the Shipper card. If you didn't get a Tap the Shipper card on the 1701 collection, you know, carded figure, yeah, that's going to be a whole new collection you're going to have to pay money for. You're my hero, Dennis. That's awesome. <coughs> so what, what, what I'm really feeling here from talking to you for this almost hour is that it's not so much the scalper that's the bad guy, it's the toy manufacturers not putting out enough toys to, to feed to meet the demand. Yeah. Or, or well, but then, you know, you can't put all the blame on them. Because I really think it's the impatient nature of the collector that feeds that beast. Well, once again, you know, I think... When, when six new figures come out, you can't be happy. Most collectors can't be happy with five of the six figures. They have to drive everywhere to get that six figure. Well, the scalpers know that. That's why they're going around to buy that six figure. I, you know, I can I can believe that because that. when uh, last year Hot Wheels did a DC Comics figure, where they did like a car based on a figure, and there were nine. And I remember I got Superman, Green Lantern, and Flash, and I thought that's all there were. And I found there were six more, and you couldn't find them anywhere. And I kept looking at eBay prices, and, you know, Hot Wheels, four bucks. Yeah. eBay, 15, 20, just for one. And I'm like, man, I'm not going to pay that. I'm going to pay that. But I waited, and I kept looking, and I kept now looking. Now they're everywhere. And I kept looking. Exactly. Yeah. And I got them all. Fuck, I have two sets of them now. Dennis, but do you think because of all of this, and I, I think it was part of eBay and just the internet in general, I mean, we, we've created this culture of just 
this this frenzy and this jacking up prices because I, I was telling the guys I went to a convention the other day where a guy had a dollar box. I think you would have punched this guy too. I, I think we're on the same page. Some some seller had a had a box with comics for a dollar, and there was a guy who was you know shopping the convention, going through this dollar box, and checking every book to see if he can make a profit. It's a fucking dollar box, you know. Right. I mean, I, mean, well, I, think, I think I jotted down on your Facebook post when you said that. If you can't look at a dollar box and know what you want to buy, I go through dollar boxes at every show I go to because there's comics that I have to pay a dollar fifty to restock for my store, and if this store is an idiot enough to dump them for a dollar, I'll pay the fifty cents. And half the time, the books that I can't even buy from Diamond for a dollar fifty because they're sold out. Right. And I go through, I'll go through Wizard World Chicago, I'll buy five long boxes, a dollar book or less, and I'll pay the fifty cents for them. Right. Because they're sold out. Right. And that's what I do. I go through Like I said, this guy who, I mean, you know, as, as someone who's a consumer going through a dollar box, and I'm picking out stuff I want to read or just for fun, and you've got some asshole next to you scanning the price of every book that's in a dollar thing so he can make a, a, an extra buck rather than, dude, it's a dollar. Just buy him and move on. I mean, does, doesn't that get you irate? Right. Oh, no, it does. It absolutely does. You know, but I mean, the same token, the guys who uh, have that giant checklist on pieces of paper on... So, Dennis, what's again? Has a culture been created because of all of this? That you know, that I mean, I had mentioned earlier that you know what? If this culture had existed when we were kids, we wouldn't have a goddamn thing to play with. I mean, we'd be like, oh, we all wouldn't have Millennium Falcon. Yeah, we would have Millennium Falcon. We would have been stuck with fucking Greedos. It's been with the shuttle forces. You know, get the bars. So once again, does how do you think how do you think we fix this if it can be fixed? I mean, or at least make it where it's once again it's back to to where everyone can somewhat be happy where it's where it's reasonable prices is and you know just I mean, how do you fix prices prices prices, prices. prices. <laughs> yes yes it is my precious just a little patience <laughs> yeah. 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 wow he sings. <laughs> He sounds better than Axel Rose does, actually. <laughs> I think you should call Guns N' Roses, dude. You might have a job there, buddy. Hey, hey, I think my voice is as good as uh, Axel's right now. I can guarantee you that. I, I, I have to say you're smoking, you're, it, you're, you're smoking it, man. You're smoking his voice. So the, where Scalping Alley hit its high mark was the Princess Leia from the Tower of the Force Collection. Kidder take an effective interest to say we're only going to put one Princess Leia in a case of, I think it was 12 or 16 figures. One Princess Leia of the new launch... And it, they look like garbage, but the only one for this land. This is where scalping really hit the high point. And this is where the Wall Street Journal got involved, and this is when they found me, because I was, I was scalping for this land. So the Wall Street Journal 
You know well, what? I know exactly what you mean. You Let me ask you because I work at the shop as well. So you might know what I'm about to say here. Back in December with Amazing Spider-Man 700. How yeah. how many people did you have in your shop that were not regulars come in and say, "Oh, I saw on the news they're killing Spider-Man. Do you have the comic?" Yep. Yeah. It's I, I You know what? And then the thing is this, that's I know this. That's why I bought a ton of those. And that I was selling them one at a time, one for family, at a cover price in the store. I was selling them for $40 a piece on Amazon. So a lot of other people. <laughs> because for every store like myself, who the owner knew that this was going to be a hot book, I was in, I was in Decatur, Illinois, visiting my family that weekend, and I went to three stores coming home. All three of those stores didn't have a single one. I called up my store, and I'm like, hey, well, how many people are going? We have a ton of people. I'm like, are we still selling one at a time, one per family? Cover price? So like, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. That's outrageous. No, I got, I got, yeah. I got two last questions for you. Yeah. One of them is uh, I'm going to ask on behalf of John because the the way you dep- you ask or excuse me the way you answer this question will make you this guy's hero. Uh huh. Now I can say back when he was a kid, but he's still a teenager. So back in the uh-huh. nine in the mid nineties. When the Power Rangers released the, uh, what are they called? The the actual play accessories so the kids could pretend they were Rangers themselves. The weapons. The weapons, the weapons. yeah, the weapons. John is going everywhere. He's he's that's what he wants. Tell me, tell John, tell John you have some of these. Uh, I have them right now. I hope. Did that be you? Actually, I do. I have a giant box of Power Rangers that I need to bust out and like sort and organize. He has it. Uh, now I just try to get to the point where I just buy stuff I like or I know it's worth money and I throw it in a box and so I'm ready to sell it. Which takes stuff out of supply and it takes the uh, ads to the demand. Right. So I'm, you know, creating my own problems. But, uh, yeah, I still have a lot of those Power Rangers accessories, but, you know, actually I'm famous for the Power Rangers more so than I am anything else. You should see the look, the smile on this kid's <laughs> face right now. He's he's got the Heath Ledger ear ear to ear right now. And, and the funny oh, thing, and, and the funny thing is, Dennis, he hasn't seen the warehouse. I have. Oh, I know. Okay. 
We're going to be saving up because uh, we, we talked about some Shogun Warriors, my friend, so I'll be, uh, I'll be coming down for that. <laughs> nice. Okay, so to answer that, when Power Rangers were really popular, they were only putting the girls onto a case. So you get two Billies and two Red, you know, two Jasons, two Billies, two Snacks, and one Pink and one Yellow. Well, we, they were just as hard to fight over here in the U.S. as they were anywhere else, except for Canada. Because they wouldn't allow the Power Rangers to be on TV over there. So the kids didn't even know what the hell Power Rangers were. And Toys R Us was ordering, based on what they thought, you know, hey, this is a new toy line and was ordered. We were going over to Canada at that time, and we were buying Power Rangers by carloads and bringing them back here and selling them all over the country. And in fact, we had to, we ended up selling Susan Sarandon and Tim Robin a pink ranger and a yellow ranger that cost, I think, $10 a piece, maybe 15 Canadian. We sold them, each of those, for 125 bucks each. Wow, stupid kid. That was kind of our big claim to fame that we sold those toys to Tim and Susan. Well, yeah, but, but you know what? You know how I feel about that, but in general, the fact that you did that to Susan Sarandon tomorrow, dude, you should, awesome. charge, you should have should charge them 200 Totally, 250 <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I absolutely agree with you on that. Hey, let me get one more question, guys, then i got to take off. i got to actually uh, go to Ann Arbor and meet Neil Gaiman tonight. Really? You I'm are, serious? I told, I told you, Dennis, you're my hero, man. You truly are. Uh, you my more. my follow my my last question was mentioned earlier the websites you know like Brian's Toys and you know Big Bad Toy Store and all these other places what what impact do you think these stores are going to have on people like you when you were saying you know you can go to eBay and pay double maybe even triple or you can just order directly because me personally I do order some of my action figures by the case from Big Bad Toy Store and I do the math after shipping I'm paying just like a dollar more than I would finding them at a store. So with these yeah, websites, absolutely. with these websites around, how do you think that's going to affect you and your business in the long run? Well, I mean, I do currently Toy Scout. Uh, you know, I know there's still people out there that do it. I think it's absolutely impacting the Toy Scalpers. But one of the things is, is collectors once again don't they don't they don't have patience. They they can easily pre-order these cases for Brian's or you know Entertainment Earth or Big Ben Toy Story. That toy store or Mattel collector or wherever they order, but they, they don't want to give them their money now. They need the instant gratification of fighting it on a shelf or whatever. And then there's absolutely like a shake of it of a revolution, even a re- revolution, where it's my refuse to pay a dollar more than suggested retail price. Right, right. And those guys, those guys waste more money in us trying to find stuff and complain ten times louder than anybody else. Totally. And if you just have the patience, if you just have, you know, patience, get a dollar extra, gives you everything you want. Cool. There's a song in there, Dennis. Let's hear it, buddy. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. But guys, thanks a lot for allowing me to be on the Spinner Deck. I had, had a fun time. It's yeah. been a pleasure. We're looking, looking forward and to seeing you. Anytime you open the deck, come and see me on one of all Dude, I told you we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna plan the trip, uh, you know, and uh, we'll we'll wrap some more. And also, uh, when you make it to Shy Town, brother, give us a give us a holler. We'll uh, we'll get it we'll get together. All right, Dennis, if you don't mind, just stay on the line for about two seconds. All right. All right. Well, that's issue fifteen of the Spinner Rack, part two of uh, Toy Call. Oh, I'm sorry, Toy Scalping. The good, the, the good, bad, the bad, and, and the ugly. ugly. For another episode, or for another issue of the Spinner Rack, I'm Junior. I'm Big B. I'm Quiet John. I'm Quiet John. And I'm Carrie. We're out. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace.